In this video, prepared by Comfort Empresaria Latin America, we are going to study modern cold rooms, present in commercial refrigeration facilities. Let's start with the basic definitions that every commercial refrigeration technician should know. A cold room is a refrigerated room that is used to store perishable foods or products to prevent them from spoiling before the stipulated time. As always, the basic components of the refrigeration cycle present in a cold room are compressor, capacitor, electronic expansion valve, bug operator, shut-off valves, liquid viewers, filter dryer. We also observe the control and safety mechanisms a prisoner state to stop the equipment due to low pressure in the compressor suction or due to high pressure in the discharge of the system 9 pressure translator for the suction is used to inform the electronic controller of the room called the value of the pressure. For this it uses electronic signals of the analog or digital type. Evaporator temperature sensor to inform the room controller the exact temperature of the evaporator. For this this sensor has an internal electrical resistance, which changes its value when the temperature varies. In the end, the variation of the electrical resistance brings a change of voltage that the controller uses to know the temperature. Temperature sensor inside the cold room. It is in charge of informing the controller of the internal temperature of the cold room, through the variation of its electrical resistance, with the temperature. Electronic room controller. It is responsible for managing the electronic expansion valve, according to the pressure and temperature values shown by the sensors. This precise control allows exact control of the superheat at the outlet of the evaporator. In this way, energy consumption can be saved and the compressor can be protected at the same time. The electronic controller allows managing the variables present in the cold room, such as temperature, airspeed, humidity, etc. In addition, the controller allows turning the equipment on and off at the time it is needed. The most used row 134 A refrigerant gas pressures are 1. To reach a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. A low gauge pressure of 0.32 bars is required, equivalent to 4.70 Cig or 32 kilopascals. To achieve a temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 0.63 bars is needed, equivalent to 9.26 PSIG or 63 kilopascals. To reach a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 1 bar is needed, equivalent to 14.70 PSIG or 100 kilopascals. In some cases it is useful to know the pressure of the equipment when it is turned off in the high pressure or the condenser. Let's go see them. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees C, the equipment turned off at this temperature has a monometric pressure, both high and low, according to the table of 6.70 bar, equivalent to 98.49 PSIG or 670 kilopascals. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the condenser temperature is usually about 10 degrees Celsius above the environment where the equipment is located, thus in the table for 40 degrees Celsius, about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The high gauge pressure in the condenser is 9.18 bar equivalent to 134.94 PSIG or 918 kilopascals. Equivalent to 134.94 psi G or 918 kPa. Now let's talk about the variables to control in a cold room. Humidity, air speed, temperature, humidity to understand humidity control, we are going to analyze the following aspects. Q. The cold room controls humidity, to avoid dehydration of the stored product. B. The growth of microorganisms is also influenced by the humidity of the surrounding air. C. The water content in the food product helps microorganisms to grow. D. Low humidity removes the water content of the food product, causing loss of weight and quality. And. 
Therefore, it is necessary to maintain the humidity of the surrounding air, so that food products stay fresh and increase their shelf life. F. To maintain a constant and correct humidity, the temperature must be kept constant. G. Depending on the product stored, there are cases where it is necessary to add humidity in the cold room. 2. Airspeed. To understand the control of airspeed in a cold room, we are going to analyze the following aspects. 2. The cold room controls the speed of the air, to avoid dehumidification. B. The high speed of the air increases the coefficients of convection and heat transfer. C. The speed of the air influences the cooling and dehydration of the product. D. Higher airflow velocity increases product heat transfer and dehumidification rate. And, the increase in the rate of dehumidification of the air causes the loss of the water content of the product. 3. Temperature To understand the temperature control in a cold room, we are going to analyze the following aspects. 2. The cold room maintains the temperature of the system, according to the needs. B. Temperature has a significant influence on microbiological and chemical processes which occur in food products. C. Low temperatures reduce the growth rate of microorganisms. Normally, the relationship between growth rate and temperature is exponential, so a change of just a few degrees can make a big difference in growth rate. D. Many microorganisms require temperatures above zero degrees Celsius for optimal growth conditions but some organisms can grow down to minus 12 degrees C. And, freezing a product normally kills 10 to 90 percent of the various microorganisms, which means that a product cannot be sterilized by freezing. F. When cooling fresh produce such as fresh meat, the temperature should not be lowered too quickly, as this may damage the product. When building a cold room, the following aspects should be taken into account. 1. Type and thickness of insulation in the walls. 2. Heating of the door frame, to avoid the formation of frost that prevents the opening of the door. 3. Floor heating to prevent ground freezing. 4. Air change. 5. Underfloor ventilation. 6. Pressure relief valve on the wall to equalize the pressure between the room and the environment. 2-way pressure equalization. 7. The man alarm in the cold room is mandatory, for cold rooms with negative temperatures, and if the volume is greater than 10 cubic meters. 8. If there is no pressure equalization in a cold store, the air inside cools and shrinks thus creating a vacuum. Thanks for joining us.